since we had a bit of a challenge. And let me say good afternoon, good morning, good evening to us or wherever you find yourself. Uh, it's 1.13 here in Ghana and it's a sunny afternoon, I must say, even though there are some uh, clouds which are gradually forming, but that no, we're standing is cool over here. And I strongly believe it's cool outside wherever you find yourself to. So good afternoon once again. We are going to have a wonderful session and I'm sure as you've all seen on the flyer, today's uh, theme or today's discussion is going to be centered around personal branding. And we have a wonderful personality here uh, who is an author. He has written several books. He's a physician by profession. He's a wonderful gentleman from Ghana. And uh, I would want to quickly say something brief about, about him before I leave the floor for him. So his name is uh, Dr. Rudolf Mensa, and he's a young dynamic speaker. Uh, he's devoted to helping people find meaning in their lives, as well as becoming what they dream of. He's also an author, as I said early on, and he's a, he's a startup entrepreneur. He's one of his central principles in his life. It's uh, we can all do more than we think we could. It's one thing he so much appreciates. Uh, as a person, he also thinks you need to define your life's purpose, dedicate and commit to yourself to it through hard work and also discipline, and then we shall win. Uh, it may not be immediately, but definitely. These are some of the philosophies uh, Dr. Rudolf Mensah shares in. Uh, in addition to his work as a health practitioner, he has a special interest in public health and also has a certificate in epidemiology. So without wasting much time, I would uh, invite our speaker or our guest for today's webinar series to take the floor, even as he talks to us about the personal branding theme for today. So Dr. Udo, you are welcome to the monthly GAP webinar series. We so much wish that we get all that you can give to us today and we'll be able to use it after today's meeting. So thank you very much and welcome to GAP. So over to you, Dr. Rudolph. Thank you very much, Isaac. It's a, it's a pleasure to, to be here. I believe that um, as young people, we do have a purpose. We have a role to play, especially in Africa. And one of the things that we have to understand is that you, until you position yourself to do that, you won't be able to be effective in delivering on your mandate, wherever you are. Uh, the late Kofi Annan of Ghana, the, the former UN General Secretary said something that if you are young, you don't have to despise your age and think that because you are young, you can do what, what you set your mind to. You just have to position yourself in a way that where other people might have even felt you can, you can triumph there. And so today I'm going to do a short presentation. I, uh, I have a very tight day, so I'm really hoping that we will have more of a discussion than a presentation, because when it comes to personal branding, one of the things that I've come to realize is that a lot of people think that we should leave it for the celebrities or the politicians or the, like, the people up there who consciously craft their brand. But as a student, as a, a graduate student, as an undergraduate, as a whichever level you find yourself, you need to understand that you have to put yourself out there for people to know what you represent. That is all about personal branding. And until you do that, people are going to subscribe you or ascribe you to something that you may not like. And so if people are going to call you names, then why don't you tell them what to call you? That is my, my personal definition of what a personal brand is. People are going to talk about you anyway. So why don't you give them something to talk about? Because you live in a world where people judge what you do and everything. So I'm going to share my screen and I'll go quickly go through the presentation that I have. I wasn't able to fully develop my slides, but I will make it available to the team uh, perhaps next week so that you can share with the, with the members. But before I start, I'm going to start with an interesting story which start, uh, happened a week ago. I was leaving the house to go get something uh, at the store. I had my ATM card, my Visa card, my Ghana card, and also my voter's ID, plus an amount of 250 cities. 
in my my pocket i once lost my wallet so i have I have desisted from the idea of carrying wallets in my my pocket so i had all these my cards and the money in my my pocket and as i was crossing the the gutter in front of my apartment it fell so my my visa card my money my my voters idea my ghana card fell down and i went I got into town and I only realized that I didn't have anything on me. It was, it was such a, a, a stressful moment for me. And so I was wondering what I was going to do. I called my bank quickly to, to either uh, monitor my ATM. If somebody tries to withdraw money to block it, I called my, my SIM, uh, the network provider for my, my phone. And then around 5 p.m. in the evening, when I got back home, I got a call from an unknown number. And the person was asking, are you rude of Mensa? I said, yes. He said, okay, I found your, your visa card and your, your voter's ID and your Ghana card. And I went online. I Googled your name. I found your name on Google and I followed to your Facebook page. I got your number there and I'm calling you. I was so surprised. And that is the essence of personal branding. So ask yourself, just imagine if, if how was he going to contact me? if I didn't have a trail of myself online and how was he able to know that a particular route of Mensa he found on Google was the one whose card he had. It's because I have a verified Google account. And so the moment you saw my picture on Google and you saw the picture of my voter's ID and he connected it to my Visa card and he went to my Facebook page, he knew he found the right person. And my phone number was available for him to call me. And I got my Visa card and my voters right that evening, even though I didn't get the money back. But anyway, I got my, my cards and my, my voters. And so in essence, what I'm trying to say to you out of the block right now is that when it comes to personal branding, you have to be conscious about it. You have to build it in a way where you never know how it's going to affect you or how it's going to bring you to a point where, you know, you are going to find yourself at a place where people are going to ask, what do you have to show for what you say you can do? So quickly, we are going to go through this, uh, this uh, slide that I have here. Like I said, I'm going to share the, the final slides with you um, at the end of the, the presentation. If you can see my slides where you are, kindly leave a comment in the chat section so I know you are following. And if my voice is clear at your end, please indicate for me to know as well. I'm using a microphone. I want to make sure none of you are missing uh, the audio at your end. Thank you. So we begin with a question. What, what is a personal brand? You know, we talk about, you hear it on the radio, you hear people talk about this all the time. So we, we, are, going to, we are going to ask the question, what is a personal brand? Is it, is it all only for celebrities? Is it only for uh, politicians? Are they the only ones who are crafting um, their brand? Jeff Bezos, who is uh, one of the richest men in, in, in the world, the founder of Amazon and a host of other companies, he says that your brand is what other people say about you when you are not in the room. Your brand is what other people say about you when you are not in the room, which means that you have to create a story around yourself Create a, a story. Thank you so much, Isaac. And thank you to anyone. Everyone's giving the feedback. You have to position yourself in such a way that when you are not there, people can still find what you stand for. So the example I gave you from the beginning, this guy went online, Googled my name and found me, went to my Facebook page, find, found my number and was able to contact me. Immediately, he knew who I was. He knew I was an author. He knew I was a, a practicing physician. He knew where I stayed. He, like, he had information about me that made him know, even though he never met me, he knew who I was because I have a brand online which represents my personality. And this is a conscious effort. That's what I want you to write down, that this is a conscious effort. You're not going to wake up one day and find yourself as, as having an authentic brand, you need to craft it. You have to be intentional about it. Like I said, people are going to talk about you. So you have to give them something to talk about. Write it down. People are going to talk about you. So you have to give them something to talk about. And that is you being conscious of telling them, this is what I stand for. When it comes to me as a person, this is my vision. This is the mission I am on. And this is what I want to accomplish at the end of my life. So please let's let's it be let it be something that you you craft 
and the message that you put out there because people are going to form their own opinion about you. So it's very important that you direct the narrative and you don't allow people to lead it. So when it, when it comes to your personal brand, you have to think of yourself as a product. Think of yourself as a product. Just like if you put any product out there, how do you, how do you present a product? First of all, you have to present all, most of the brands out there. When you mention Nike or you mention Adidas or you mention Reebok, or any of those brands that people will, will rush, like say iPhone. Why would someone spend a thousand dollars to buy an iPhone? Because they've created a brand. They have created a social class where people feel like once you are using an iPhone, you belong to a certain class of people. Even though that person may be poor and may not have money compared to somebody using a Samsung or iTel or uh, Techno or other Android phone. But iPhone has been able to brand themselves in a certain way that they are saying that if you use an iPhone, then you belong to a certain class of people. And so people would die to buy an iPhone, even though their bank accounts are empty, because they want to belong to a certain brand. And so when it comes to a personal brand, you have to craft yourself in the same way. How do you want people to see you? You have to be, present yourself as a powerful, authentic, consistent, visible, and vulnerable person, which means that if when we say powerful, it doesn't mean maybe you are the president of the uh, your student union or church or Muslim group or whatever group that you belong to. No, it's about what message you send out there. If you are a student, if you are in leadership, if you are into small business, if you are starting a business or what, wherever you find yourself, you need to send a message that people resonate and say, okay, when they hear the name Mariam, what comes to their mind? When when somebody hears the name. Mariam, what, what is the first thing that comes to the person's mind? When somebody hears the name uh, Mountain or Yoki, like what is the thing that comes to people's mind? You have to create a compelling, powerful one sentence that people will associate you with. And being authentic is very key. What I'm saying here is I don't want you to go and lie on your CV. Go and lie on your, your bio on Twitter or take uh, Instagram photos or go on TikTok and lie that you are someone that you are not. You have to be yourself. And that means you have to be authentic. You have to be true. And that is the only kind of brand that will travel far. Because if you lie, the lie will catch up with you. You find a lot of people on social media who call themselves business executives, CEOs, uh, uh, a lot of things. And, uh, and they, you, you see their brand, their bio, and they've written a lot of you know, titles in there, but you find them and they are nothing compared to what they present online. So it is very important to be authentic. Don't lie on your CV. Don't lie uh, uh, on your online presentation of who you are. Because one, people know who you are in a real person. Number two, whatever you say you are, you'll be tested. A time will come that people will ask you to do what you say you can do. And then you'll be found wanting. And you have to be consistent. I have been online since uh, 2014. I've been writing since 2014. I've been on Amazon. I've written about seven books. So if I tell you that I am an author, I'm a writer, I am talking to you about, I am, I am talking to you about um, someone who has been in that area for over seven years. And so I have the authority to talk to you about something like writing and publishing because I have been consistent in it. I may not have the authority to talk to you about, uh, what, what, let's say, mechanical engineering or, or cryptocurrency. I don't have the authority today because I haven't been consistent in there. So you have to make sure that your brand is presenting something that you are consistent in it. If you're a student leader, you've been a student leader at departments, class, faculty, college, RSRC, National Union students, you have been consistent at that level, then you know that you are getting, you want to get into leadership even after school, in, in government, in NGOs, then you, you know you are crafting a brand that will lead you there. And that is what I'm talking about. You have to be consistent. But if you do all this and people are not seeing you or seeing what you are doing, then you are not being visible. You have to, people need to see you. If I wasn't online, I would have lost my my Visa card and my voter's ID and my Ghana card. I was visible online. I was on Google, I was on Facebook, I have on Twitter, I have an Instagram account, I had a website. So if you go online today and you type my name into Google, you will find my account. I am visible out there. People will find me. I get emails from people who found me online. On LinkedIn, I get job offers and other, other things like that. Uh, before I got my new position where I am, I am working with the Ministry of Health Ghana, they did a background study of my LinkedIn account. 
And that was why I was offered my current position. And so it is very important to create a visible brand online and present value to the people who come to, to your pages. I hope you are following and I'm not losing you along the way. So why is it important to have a personal brand? That's a question that I know most of us will ask, like, why is it even important to have one? Can't I just live my life and, you know, be in my quiet place? Why do I have to present a particular brand, a particular style out there? You know, you have to, you need to have control over your, your life. That's what I meant by saying that people are going to talk about you. So why not give them something to talk about? If you don't create a compelling brand, your lack of not creating a brand will be the brand. And so you need to give them, you need to tell them who you are. Don't let other people tell, tell others who you are. If you stand for equality, for justice, for uh, feminine, if, if, if you are for uh, equality in terms of uh, working, working in the workplace, making sure women are paid their due, their due efforts, that is what you stand for. Let people know. If you stand for, for making sure that women and children are treated right in the workplace or in school, you, you are, if you want to eliminate uh, child prostitution in your community, whatever the goal is for you, you need to take control of it and need to tell people what you stand for. And that is what is meant by having a personal brand. When people come to you, what do they see? And that is what will differentiate you from other people and help you maximize your career potential. I have a lot, I have a lot of uh, colleagues who are working in the hospital now. I myself was posted to a hospital in the Kumasi, in Kumasi, Ghana, uh, called Menshia Hospital. But I was the only one who was called among my colleagues to come to the headquarters office in Ghana to work in the ministry. Why? Because I have created a compelling brand which differentiates me from my colleagues. And so I'm not just a, a practicing physician. I have something more than just being in the consulting room. And that is why I, I had to get something more than what they were doing. So until you define yourself and differentiate yourself from the, the rest of the people, they, will, they are going to add you together to everyone else and what everyone else does. And so let's look at you, yourself, your current brand. What is your identity? When you say identity, how do people know you? Are you the same person online and offline? That's a question you have to ask yourself. Number two, what are your attributes? What do you stand for? Are you into education, working with the NGOs? Are you starting your own business? Are you into craft making as a student leadership? What, is your, what are your attributes? What are your strengths? This is where you need to do a SWOT analysis. Most of you don't have a SWOT analysis of your life. You have to sit down one day, pick a pen and paper and ask yourself, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are the opportunities? And what are the, uh, do a complete SWOT analysis of your life and your strengths and then identify the things that make you who you are. Then the next one is vision. Without vision, the people perish. Do you have a live vision? At this point of my life, my vision is to find a cure for diabetes. It is a big vision, but you need to give yourself something to shoot for. You see, if someone like Elon Musk, who is uh, richest, the richest man in, in the world who just bought Twitter, his vision is to send people to Mars. And he's been working on this particular vision for the past 10 years, since he started working on paper. Elon Musk was a, a PhD student at Stanford University when he dropped out of his PhD program and started working on, on, on his business ideas. And his goal is to send people to Mars. And that is how come he started SpaceX and Tesla and all those companies and is building aircraft, rockets that will take people to Mars. It is a crazy idea. But as Steve Jobs said, only those who are crazy enough to dream are those who are going to get there. So your brand has to be, you are going towards something. And like I said, mine, find a cure for diabetes. And it, is a, is, it may be a crazy idea. It may not be possible. It may be possible, but everything I do is towards that vision. And so what is your vision in your career, in your, your, your life, whatever you are doing? Are you working with NGOs in your family? What is your vision? What do you want to achieve 5, 10, 20 years from now? That is, that is something that you need to, to stick to. And that has to be, that has to be something that uh, compares you to work hard and wake up every morning and, and go forward. That, and also value. You have to give value upfront. And like I said, I share, like what I'm doing with you today is me providing you with value. And what I'm going to get is that I'm going to get visibility. Now people, the only person I knew here before this presentation was Isaac. But after today, I'm going to get to know about 25, 30 more people 
who will know me because I came to present value. And so you take opportunity to show yourself to the world and who you are and what you can do. And then you build trust. People need to trust you. If Isaac didn't trust me, they wouldn't call me to be on here. And you are listening to me because you trust Isaac and Isaac trusts me in turn. You know that if Isaac is recommending you, me, then you can also believe that the person he's talking about is authentic. And so networking and building trust are key in reaching this, this goal that we are talking about. So let's come to the questions that we have to ask ourselves. What makes you special? What do you think is so special about you? If they say Mariam, Isaac, Mountain, uh, the names that we have here, what is, what is so special about you? What are your greatest strengths? What differentiates you from the others? If you put you side by side, 10 other ladies, what makes you special? What does your uniqueness translate to value? How do you bring this specialty to how, what makes you valuable? There are lots of doctors in Ghana, in Africa, there are lots of, there are lots of authors, writers. So what makes me special as an author? I need to bring myself to a point where I differentiate what I do from the masses. And this comes down to your significant accomplishment. Even if it's because you were the class rep for your university group and you were able to lead them through the four years of college and you did something important, these things come in hand to give you the edge as you go forward in life. And the last question is, what do you want to be known for? What do you want to be known for? I have an exercise that I do with people I mentioned the names of about 10 people and I asked them to tell me what the first thing that comes to their mind. When I mentioned Muhammad Ali, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? When I mentioned Jesus Christ, when I mentioned the prophet Muhammad, when I mentioned Mike Tyson, when I mentioned Steve Jobs, when I mentioned Elon Musk, um, our president, Nana Kofadu, if I mentioned Buhari, if I mentioned Muhammad Salah, if I mentioned Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi is the greatest prayer of all time another time so like what comes to your mind the question is what comes to your mind when you hear this name these people have identified what they want to do with their lives and created a brand so much that when you hear the name with Jafadra, you, you what comes to your mind is tennis you won't think about uh, food or running when you hear you send boots what comes to your mind is is what what is, when it, what comes to your mind is running or, or race, you, you are not going to think about boxing if you hear you saying, but Mariam disagrees with Lionel Messi being the greatest player of all time. He says, that's, that's a debate for another day. So that's, that's, that's the last question is very important. So please write it down. What do you want to be known for? What do you want to be known for? When other people hear your name, what do you want them to know? When they hear Isaac, what do you want them to think about when they hear the name Isaac or Mariam? What is it that you want to be known for? And to do that, you may not be able to answer this question yourself. So you have to seek feedback. Ask your friends, ask them. So you people, like, what do you think of me? Ask about 10 of your very close friends. What do you think of me? I, if you hear my name, like I've been your friend for four years, for five years. I've been in school with you. I've been working with you at the workplace. I've been in this NGO with you. What do you think of me? And you will hear what they have to tell you. I've done this. I try to do this every year. When I ask my close um, people or colleagues, what do you think about me? What do you think about me, like, about me regarding this particular issue or area? Seek feedback. And the challenge is that most of us, when we get feedback, we identify. When people say something and we don't like it, we try to defend it. At this stage, you are not there to defend. You only want people to tell you what they genuinely, so you have to be ready. They may say things that you don't like. Maybe they will say that you are too known. Or they will say that, uh, oh, uh, you, you, sh you like showing yourself or you don't like people. When they say those things, you don't, you don't have to defend yourself. Just listen to them talk. There may be a reason why they think that you are too known in quotes or you are proud or you are like you show you have attitude. But let them tell you what they think about you. And also ask yourself, everything they are saying, is it true? If you think it's not true or they are misunderstanding your confidence for who you are or they are misinterpreting what you do to mean that you're arrogant, then you just have to take it and move on. But don't let it bother you. But what you are doing here is genuinely seek feedback. Let them tell you what they think about you. Then make notes about what they think is, 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 is their opinion of you. Once you seek feedback, now the question is how do you strengthen your brand? How do you stand out from the crowd how do you make sure that uh, even though there are lots of people in ghana called kwame how do i make my own kwame unique 
stand out of the crowd or Mariam doesn't become just another Mariam in the crowd, but how do I become different, unique and propagate what I have for the, those out there to, to, to know me? First of all, you have to determine your goal. What is it that you want to reach? Who is your target audience? How does your current brand position you to achieve that goal? Do you need to make any changes? If your goal is to work with uh, an NGO, say UN or UNICEF, where you want to work with children in war-torn countries, or you want to get into student leadership, or you want to work in an organization where women are in technology, what is your goal? And who are you trying to reach with that goal? So after you've assessed yourself and you sought feedback from your colleagues, you have to ask yourself, do I need to make any changes? Do I have to, do I need any new skill, any new education? What do I need to position myself well to be able to reach that goal that I'm seeking? And so it's time now for you to make relevant adjustments. Do you need to go back to school? I had to go back to, to school to go and get my master's degree because my goal right now, like I told you from the beginning, is to help find a cure for diabetes. And it also means that I have to work with organizations such as World Health Organization, West Africa Health Organization, uh, Africa CDC, um, and a host of other uh, programs or research institutions who are working in the area where I want to achieve my goal. So I realized that in order to do that, I need to leave my profession, go back to school and possibly get a PhD in the area where I want to do my research. So I, need, I needed to go back to school for the purpose of education. I only did that because I did an evaluation of where I want to go and I knew there were gaps for me to fill. And so if you need to get education, if you have to go back to school to get a master's, a PhD, and, and you can, please do it. If you need to get experience by working with other people to get experience, then you need to do it. If you need to build relationships, relationships, that is networking. It comes from two words, relation and shifts. Any new thing that you will get, whether money, position, you have to relate with new shapes to take you to where you want to get to. I'm saying it again. Any new place that you will get to, whatever you achieve in life, you can't get it where you are now unless you get to a new place. And you can only get there when you relate to a new ship that would take you to where you want to get to. So if your friends have been the same, if your friends are not talking about new ideas, the people you know are the people you know, you don't know anyone from any other country ap apart from your own country, your own school, you don't make any connections, then you are never going to get out of where you are because the opportunities that will come to you will likely come from people who are outside of your zone. And so you have to create a relationship to, to build the gap that you need to reach your goal. And then after you are done, it's time for you to build, begin to act the part. The languages you speak, share your story, write blogs, write stories, publish uh, papers, introduce yourself, build a bio online that will people are, would, would identify you with. How many of us here are on LinkedIn? If you are not on LinkedIn, please show by hand in the comment section because it is, it is an abomination. It is an abomination if, if you are not on LinkedIn at the moment. So if you are not show by hand so that we, we baptize you before we, we finish with this, with this presentation. Thank you very much. So let's, let's move on quickly. I want us to get to the point where we ask questions. So you can either leave them in the, in the chat or when the time is up, you would go over and answer all the questions that we have there. So when you say build your brand, you have to show it, be visible. So build influential, build, build very, very, very good influential relationships where you make connections. So for instance, now I got, I'm giving you practical examples. I got my new job because I made friends with the HR. I made friends with the HR, uh, the, the, the HR at my new office who introduced me to my current director who called me for interview for my current position. So the only way I got it is because I built relationships and it wasn't merely a political or professional, it was relationships. And it could be, it could be political, it could be uh, religious, but any way you build it, make sure you build relationships. Most of us run away from politics because especially we think that, oh, politics is a ground where you don't have to get in. But I'm telling you that if you're going to make the influence you want to make in life, you may have to use certain channels to get to that point to be able to make that influence. If you're not part of the decision making, and I said this to a friend the last time, that there is a room where decisions are made and you have to pray, like you have to work hard that either you are in that room or somebody is there to mention your name. 
there is a room where decisions are made and you have to work hard to the point that it is either you yourself, you are in that room where the decisions have been made or there is somebody there to mention your name. If not, you can work very hard throughout your life and not be able to make any impact because they will overlook you. And so relationships, sorry, relationships are very, very important. And that's why you have to get involved in cross-functional projects. You have to get into it. You have to get into it. And that's why I said earlier, if you're not on a, a platform such as LinkedIn, but you're on TikTok, then you have to lay hands on you and, and pray over your head. Because at this point in your life, your relationships are not on TikTok. They are, they are on LinkedIn. That is where you build professional relationships. If you want to do other things like have fun, or, then you can go on TikTok and watch videos and build your brand as a social media influencer. But if you're talking about your professional career, then please, uh, before this meeting end, we, we have to discuss your, your future. Uh, it's very, very important. And, and the next thing is take on a leadership role in relevant organization, whether on campus, outside campus, in your church, at your local uh, religious group, make sure you take a leadership role. Some of us, you go to places and we hide at the back. We don't want anyone to see us. We don't want anyone to, to identify us, so we will, we will hide. Even if you are, uh, uh, what do you call it, an usher, you, you organizer, take any role at all in any, in any organization and play a part because that is how you build your muscles and show your brand. It's very, very important. Don't hide in it. If you are part of this group and you don't have any role to play, make sure they give you a role. Maybe your job will be to remind people about meetings. Please do it. Please, please, and please do it. And then start a website or a blog. Start a website or, or a blog. I'm getting a lot of feedback on the LinkedIn thing. I think we'll come back to it. So it is very important. There are free websites that you can, like WordPress, which can use to start a blog. Start writing about what you know. So that when they start talking about, okay, who in Kenya, who in Nigeria is very conversant about cryptocurrency or blockchain or digital marketing, because you've been writing blogs about it, your name will come up. So please, it is also an important way of putting yourself out there. Now let's come to social media. I know I just mentioned TikTok and some people, uh, I myself, I have a TikTok account. So I'm not saying that don't be on TikTok. But what I'm saying is that you should know where you build your brand from. My professional page on LinkedIn, I don't share anything from my, my Instagram or my Twitter page. So you need... You, you need to find a way to, to build yourself a brand that separates you from what other, everyone else is doing. So let's come to how you can make, uh, how you can make uh, use of social media. It's a very important tool. It's a very, very uh, important tool for, for us. I've been on TikTok for about five months. I'm almost on, I think I have about 10,000 followers at the moment. And so, if, if I commit to it, uh, I can do it, but that's not something that I'm, I'm committed to right now. So whatever you do, it's part of your brand. Make sure that you're taking the message there, but don't get distracted. Whether it's YouTube, because these platforms are making people money. So you just have to know how, how you utilize it, but you, you still need a professional platform. That is why you have to be on LinkedIn. So the first thing is you have to choose your platform. Don't be everywhere. Any social media platform, you are there. You're on WhatsApp, you're on Instagram, you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you're on TikTok. Uh, what other ones? Uh, there's one that's uh, Snapchat. Yes, there's Snapchat. I'm not on Snapchat. I don't know how it works. So maybe you have to teach me uh, after, after we are done. Those of you on Snapchat, I don't know how it works. And that's not something that I have been interested in, in because I've always felt that it's for, for pictures and videos of ladies dancing. I don't know, but that's, that's it, by the way. So what is your target audience? And I, I've, I don't think that what I have to say, that's a place I have to say it. I can say it on Facebook. I can say it on, on YouTube. I can say it on LinkedIn. I can say it on my Twitter uh, account. So choose where you want to share your message. So choose where you want to say it. That's number one. You can choose to blog. Like I said, you can do WordPress. You can do LinkedIn. There's Medium. These are all platforms where you can share your message. There's also a micro blogging site like Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google Plus. Google Plus is no longer active. They, they phase this out. So you can also do video and audio website. Like I said, I have a podcast as well. So it's, that's another thing that you can use to share your message. So you can do YouTube. You can do podcasting. If you are here and you are, you are, you are here and you are into, let's say, you are, you are into 
cryptocurrency. I'm, I'm, I'm using this as an example or student leadership, or you are talking about how to build a CV, how to present yourself, how to pass interviews. Why not start a podcast where you teach people how to do that? Just record episodes of, of it and share online. People are going to listen to it. And now they are going to be, you are going to be an expert in that area. So it's very, very important. It's very, very, very important. Slide share for, for people who are in school. It's, it's a great platform to, to use as well. And then there's also image posting, Twitter, Pinterest, like I said, I'm not on all of this uh, on that. For quickly on the podcast, let me answer before I go on. There's an there's a app called Anchor. There's an app called Anchor. I want you to, to check it out. It, uh, let me put it in the chat section before I move on. It's called Anchor. It allows you to create your own podcast and then you can share to all the platforms. It can go on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, about 14 platforms, wherever you listen to podcasts. So check out Anchor online, just Google Anchor and then you'll find it. It's very easy to use. You can just record your own podcast right from your phone and you'll be good to go. And so that's, that's a very good a very good one to, to go with. And then how do you establish your value? Because you've talked about establishing value. Once you go on social media, you have to let people know what you are there for. If not, you'll be following trends. Because if you go, if you go uh, on, yes, if you are not on SlideShare, then you need to be double baptized because that one is for, is for students. And especially if you are into career burden, then if you're not on SlideShare, you'll be double baptized before you leave here. You have to establish your brand. Let, don't follow trend. If you go on Twitter, something will be trending. And if you don't know what you are there to do, then you'll be following the trend. So you have to create your own content or create content, tell people what you, are, you stand for. And so don't just go there and be retweeting what others are saying, liking and commenting. What do you have to say yourself? If you go on LinkedIn, don't just be reacting on people's posts, push something for other people to read and then engage. And that's how you make deeper connections, also offline. So we, even though we are talking about online platforms, when you go for meetings, greet people by, by hand, by, by face, go walk up to them. When you close from church, don't carry your Bible and run away. When you close from the meeting at your Muslim group, don't, don't run away from, from the rest of your group. Go to them and ask them, how are you? Or how was your day? Uh, ask them the name if you don't know and make meaningful connections, create connections offline as well. Don't be an antisocial person. The world in which you live now, you can only make it if you connect yourself to the right people. And so don't, don't isolate yourself from the rest of them. So before you can succeed online, you need to create a plan. If you don't have a plan to commit to consistently, then you can't make it. And so you have to make sure that you create a plan. I have a time manager on Facebook. I set it to 30 minutes. When I spend 30 minutes on Facebook, I get a notification and then I log off. And so if you want to spend an hour on social media, you have to set a time or an alarm. If not, especially those of you who are on TikTok, you can be addicted to scrolling up and down, looking at videos, people dancing, people doing all these challenges. By the time you realize you spend an hour and a half on social media and your, your data is gone. So make sure you are using it for something productive, not something that is draining your, your account of internet data. So either you use scheduled automatic or you, you time yourself or you give yourself, uh, what do you call it? You give yourself an alarm to tell you that, okay, it's time for me to log off. I've had enough of Facebook today. I've had enough of Twitter today. So let's move on to, to something else. Now, how do you manage your brand? The simple answer is be proactive. That means that don't wait for people to ascribe you to something, but tell them who you are. It's very, very important to be proactive, to project the image so that they will know who you are from what you tell them. Promote your accomplishment. It doesn't mean that brag, but if you've written a book, then tell them you've written a book. If you are a student leader, tell them. If you have an NGO, talk about it. If you have a podcast, talk about it. If you run a blog, talk about it. That is how people will get to know you. There is a lot of noise out there, a lot of noise online. So you have to make sure that you project your value. You project your value onto the people uh, out there. My name on LinkedIn is just Rudolf Mensa. Let me just put it here so you can just find it. You will find my current position working with the Ministry of Health Ghana in there. So it's, it's, it's in there. But it's, it's, it's basically that. It's, it's basically that you have to project it and communicate it. And the last one is very important. Stay relevant. Staying relevant means that for the past five years, what I've been talking about online has been consistent and people get value from it. 
So you have to sell yourself. Thank you, Mariam. You have to sell yourself because people are only going to buy what you sell. And if you are not telling them who you are, or if you are not, if you are not showcasing it, then but they have to be relevant. Stay relevant. Don't don't. Uh, today you are dead, the next day you start joining in the. Today you are talking about uh, policies. The next day you are talking about uh, student leadership. The next day you join the the comedians. You are also sharing jokes. No, you have to be consistent with what you share, and then be relevant. Don't double in all the trend because you also want to trend. That's not how you build an image online. Now let's come to being strategic. Choose your associates wisely. Your friends, you have to choose them. The people who who make up, who who join you as friends should be chosen by you. What you you would have to ask yourself why um, Isaac still has contacted me. We were in the same university from our undergraduate days, and we've been able to maintain our relationship or friendship up to now. And so we had a lot of friends back then, but I'm still not friends with most of them. But there are very few like himself who are still on my contact list. And it doesn't matter how um, divergent our path may be or how uh, far we find ourselves from each other. I know that he's one of the very few people that will still stay in that circle where if we have to call somebody like friends to come to places, then he will be the one to call and I will be the one he will call. And that is how you choose the people you associate with. Don't just let everyone waste your time because you have to be strategic about it. You yourself need to have a positive attitude. You have to dress and act the parts. This is very important. This is very, very important. Choose a style and stick to it. I remember for a whole year on, in college, I wore a shirt and a tie every day. I wore a shirt and a tie, and that became my identity. People will see you, even like, even though uh, people see you and like, why are you always in a tie? When we, there's a difference between fashion and style. I'm not saying you should buy expensive uh, branded uh, Gucci, uh, Nike, Armani. No, that is that is fashion. I'm talking about style. If your style is a simple, uh, you want to be in a blue or white shirt, tucked in in a tie all the time. That let that let that be your style. You want to wear a jacket or a suit. Let that be your style. If you see billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Steve Jobs who were always wearing a blue t-shirt, it became a style. Once you see them, you know who they are. You, uh, you know that they are tech people. And so let's, your dressing here doesn't mean that you should dress like flamboyant. You should be some expensive clothing. No, but pick a style and stick to it. If you want to wear fugu, if you want to wear uh, African print, if you want to wear, make sure it is well pressed. You dress the part. One day I went for, I went to work. I had no idea what was up for my day. I only to get a call that the Minister for Health for Ghana was attending a, a meeting in Parliament and needed to something to go with. And I was the one to do it. I don't want to get into details, but this was me who went to work in my Israel style of a shirt, a tie, and a suit. I didn't know that I was I would be needed to go into an important meeting. But here I was, and I had to do it because I was ready. So if if imagine if I went to work that day in the polo lacrosse. Or I went to work that day in, in a shirt without a tie or I wasn't properly dressed for it. You never know where the opportunity will come from. And so you always have to dress and act the part. Don't let people tell you you like dressing too much. No, it's better to be overdressed than to be underdressed. Thank you. Let's, let's, that, that leads to you maintaining a professional image online. Don't jump into the jokes and the humor and making uh, using foul language saying things to make people happy. No, maintain a professional image online. Don't fall into the gutters. Don't fall into the gutters with them. Make sure you build a brand that people will see you and, and respect you and know that this person stands for something true. We have, I have a few recommended sources, which I, like I said, I will share with you after the presentation, but this brings me to the close of my, my presentation about personal brand. What I'm going to close here is with, the lack of you creating a brand for who you are and consciously burden it for people to recognize you is going to leave a hole and others to speculate and call you by names or things that are not who you are. So it's very, very important to build that brand, be strategic about it and build a brand that will lead you to where you want to be in future. You have a calling, you have a purpose. And like I said, it may not happen immediately, but definitely whatever you want to achieve, if you stick your mind to it and work towards it, you can get there. 
And it's very important to be conscious about building this brand from the scratch. I believe in you. And I was glad to get opportunity to interact with you. I will end the presentation here and take the questions. And I'm sure we'll have some fun um, talking within the next, I don't know how much time they will give us, but maybe 15 minutes or so to go through the questions that we have and interact. Thank you so much for your audience. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I think you've had a wonderful presentation. So we want to take questions from the participants. If you have any question, just uh, type it in the question and answer box down there. Okay, I think there's one question in the question and answer page. I don't know if I can take that. Yes, that's it. You can take it. Okay, so Patrick, uh, Nada, I hope I got your surname right. It says that on making relationship with the employer HR or any person, it's okay most of the time when you are of the same sex. How would you help ladies to get into the relationship with a male employer and let her be assisted in finding a job for the sake that she's qualified, not for any other reason? And this is quite a, yes, a, a tricky and a complex one because I see it all the time. It will interest you to know that the HR that I made friends with is a lady. The, the HR that I made friends with at the ministry was, was a lady who, uh, who later introduced me to the director, who is also a woman. So the, the opposite sex relationships, I have always tried to create clear boundary lines. You know, you don't have to give people ideas. That's the first thing I would say. If you are making friends with people, you have to let them know, this is where I stand. This is, this is, this, these are the lines that I won't cross because some people will feel like, oh, but you were cool with me, but you were flirting with me. So I thought that, no, don't, don't let people assume that you like them. You have to be clear and straightforward with them. That's number one. And also it's very important that if a woman is qualified, if a woman is qualified to do a job, my opinion is that you don't need to, uh, let's say for instance, seek sexual favors before you get, you get a job. And that is something that even though we may deny, it happens a lot in our circles. It happens a lot in, uh, in where we are in Africa, where people would want to uh, have something to do with you because, before they give you a job. But to answer your question, to our ladies, if you're making a relationship with a male employer or uh, an employer, an HR who is uh, uh, an, of the opposite sex, please make sure you create Please make sure you create clear boundaries. Set clear boundaries from the beginning. Don't make them assume that, that something can happen between you two. Just from the very beginning, if you are in a relationship, let them know that you are in a relationship. If you have a boyfriend, if you are married, even if it's possible, let them know your, your partner. That way the person will know that you are serious. But if you hide your, your status, Maybe you have a boyfriend, but you hide the fact that you are going out. The person might think that, oh, then I can take advantage of you. So set clear boundaries from the beginning and let everything you do be, be professional. Let everything you do be, be professional. Don't go into personal discussions or anything like that. I think I will end it there. We, we can uh, talk more about that later uh, to Patrick, but it's an interesting question that I think uh, we all have to take very, very seriously. Samuel Abugri says that, can you rewrite your brand? And if yes, how could you change the old brand, which was bad? This would take, uh, this is possible. Yes, there are people who have had a bad uh, brand presentation and have had to go back. There was an artist in Ghana who was called uh, Wiser. This guy went on stage and openly, he went on stage and openly showed his manhood. And that was the end of his career. He tried to rebrand and come back with a, a new song, but it never worked because he was a promising young artist, but he failed to rebrand. But there's another example of an artist in Ghana, I, I think you would all know, called Shatawale. Shatawale was initially starting as Bandana. When he started as a musician, he was called Bandana, and his music career was going in a, in a bad light. He wasn't thriving. So he traveled out to the country, came back and rebranded to Shatawale, and started his career again on the new brand. Now he was able to do, recently he did a music with, uh, is it Beyonce? I think so. 
and he's won several awards with his new brand. So if the question is if you can rewrite your brand, yes, you can. You definitely can change your brand. But then it takes you to go back and say, what was wrong with what I was doing before? If there's a change of name, change of logo, change of ideas, your bio, you have to go back and first of all, assess the things that you are doing wrong with the old brand. And then ask yourself, how do I change this? How do I prove to people that they can trust that I have changed from the old ways? Because you need to build trust. If you can't build that trust, then people will think, oh, he's the same person. Even though he's, he's, he has changed the name, he has changed the company name or logo or the personal brand name or the bio online, he's still the same person. Though you need people to trust you and it will come with time. So you have to be patient and build your new brand, but definitely you can change your brand. You can go back and find out what you did wrong and change the brand uh, from there. Another question from Juma Omala, I think I got your surname right, forgive me if I didn't, um, says I'm a bit worried of people having all my duties, my email, my phone number and so on in the online platforms. What is the line between creating your brand and giving too much personal information? There is so much surveillance, capitalism, fraud, and other more practices going on with this. This is so true, Juma. This is so, so true. And I myself have been a victim of some of these things. Not, I didn't fall to uh, spam, but I get a lot of spam emails because my emails are out there on some of these platforms. So this is what I would say. First of all, you have been watched. Whether you, you know it or not, you are being watched because there is what we call target marketing. Once you have an account on Facebook, if you go on Google, for instance, and you want to search for uh, where to find television, when you go on Facebook, you are going to see an advertisement of televisions on Facebook. And so that is how you are targeted. So everything you do online is being monitored your numbers, they study your activity to know what you like and what you don't like so they can target you with advertisement. And so if you're somebody who is uh, anxious or conscious of the fact that you don't want to put too much of yourself out there, then choose your platform. Choose your platform. Like I said, if you want to build your professional career, then go on LinkedIn and forget about all the other uh, interactive platforms like Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. Stay on LinkedIn and build a brand there. Yeah so that you don't have to be on a lot of platforms. The issue comes with people who want to be everywhere all the time. Because if you want to create any new account, you have to provide all these details over and over again, and you are susceptible to uh, scams and fraudulent activities. So pick a platform based on what you do, your work requires you to do. Pick a platform and work with that. That's very, very important. Once you get a platform that you are comfortable with, then this is the time for you to stick there until you are comfortable to go to other places. Um, Juma, I hope I'm able to help you with that. But uh, myself, I've, I've, I'm an introvert. Uh, I didn't used to be very vocal and out there. So I try to pick one platform to, to maximize my effort there. So they just don't jump from places to places. If it's LinkedIn, stay there. Make sure you maximize it to the best of your ability. Thank you. Uh, Patrick, again, I'm very happy with the emphasis of the points and relationships. Most ladies are indeed victims when it comes in job seeking. They really need to, to be strong enough when making relationship with employers. This is true. Thank you, Patrick, for bringing the comments. Like I said, make sure you don't give them any ideas that, oh, you will be willing to compromise on, on your sexuality or you are going to give in to get what you want. Set clear lines. Let them know that you are here with your brain and your competence, not your, your gender. You are not there to please them as a woman, but you are there to do what is required of you as, as somebody who has a skill and competence. And if you prove that, nobody will disrespect you, even to think that the only thing you have to give them to get a job is when they sleep with you. And so you need to come there and say, hey, I know what time I know. If Imagine if a, a lady doctor goes into your hospital and a medical superintendent he won't do that because he knows that he's there. She's there because she's competent. She's not there because somebody is favoring her. So whatever, whatever role you have to play as a nurse, as a, an accountant, as an HR, as an engineer, uh, digital marketer, whatever role you play in your organization, let the people know, know that you can do your work and you know your work, and you have the skill and competence. You're not dead simply because you're a woman or somebody gave you favors. Prove to them that you know, uh, you have a handle on what you're doing, and that is why, why you are there, so that people won't mistake your, your presence there to mean that 
you you are there because people are giving you favors. I think I've responded to the four questions in the chat section. I don't know if there are any anywhere else I haven't read yet. Hello, doctor. Um, I have Hello. just uh, one last question, I guess. I think okay, your, your presentation has been really interesting and um, insightful so far. So you mentioned um, the importance of creating um, relationships, right? So I think yes. I know that it's one thing to create the relationship and then it's another thing to maintain the relationship is built over the time so how do you maintain this relationship like how do you maintain that effective relationship between you okay and the other that's, that's an excellent question mariam uh the, i don't know how many of you have read the book how to win friends and influence people uh the very first rule he says in there is that be genuinely interested in people so some of us, we, we just like, when we hear network, network, we just, oh, maybe on this page, we'll be asking people for their numbers and we, do, we won't even check up on them. We just like the idea of, oh, we have, we have somebody, I know somebody from Nigeria, I know somebody from Ghana, I know someone from Kenya, I know someone from Egypt. So we just like the idea of friends, like making friends, but we need to know that friendship is an investment. That's number one friendship is an investment so if you want to build meaningful relationship then you, you need to know that you have to invest in it you have to invest your time and and consciously provide value to the other person so for instance when i wanted to get my my books into nigeria my auntie is, is, is in nigeria by the way she's in she's in lagos and i visited her once and i wanted to to find somebody there who had a contact to be able to have my books there and I had a friend who I helped to publish a book on Amazon. I, I had first helped him to do something and I never asked him for a favor. So when the time came that I needed a favor, I just called him up and said, hey, I need to get my books to some people in Nigeria. And I know you are, you are in Lagos. <laughs> I, I have sent this thing to my auntie. I need somebody to pick it up from her. And, and he said, all right, great. I will do it for you. And so we realized that this is what I have to say to answer your question. When it's come to friendship, you have to invest. That's number one. Number two, you have to give, give, give before you ask. I'm saying it again. You have to give, give, give before you ask, which means that you should be genuinely thinking about how can I help this person become a better person? So if it's a friend that you've made, check up on the person, ask the person how they are doing, ask them how they are doing. Like, how their goals, how they are doing on their goals, check up on them, help them to stay accountable. If the person is a student, make sure, ask them how they are learning, how their school is going. If they are into research as postgraduate students, how, you should be asking them how their research is going, if they are, have their own companies. They genuinely interested in knowing how business is going. And that way the person will know that you care about him or her and are not just interested in making relationships for your personal gain. It is not for your personal gain. You have to make sure that you are helping other people. Seek to, 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 gen, to be genuinely interested in what they are doing and be kind to them. And you realize that the time will come that you wouldn't even have to beg them, but they realize that, oh, this person has given, 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 given to me. And so I, don't, I won't hesitate to help him as well. So the question, the answer is make sure understand that friendship is investment. So invest your time, invest your, sometimes you may even have to invest your money into the relationship. And that is why you don't have to make friends with a lot of people. Don't call everyone your friend. Some of them are acquaintances. Some of them are colleagues. Let them in, remain as so. But the people that you call your friend will require your investment and make sure you add value to their lives. And that is how you build a relationship that you need to carry you forward. Okay, thank you very much, um, Doc. I think that was a very great answer. We should invest in our relationships. That's great. And then I think we should also uh, seek for ways to add values to their life. We should not be always about them um, receiving, but about giving as well. So thank you very much, um, Dr. Rodolf. Over Excellent. to you, Isaac. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mariam. I think it's been a wonderful session with Dr. Rodolf. Personally, I've learned a lot. And I'm sure we all have to, uh, from the comment session, I'm um, winning positive feedback from today's webinar series. I think it was what they're waiting and everything to dance today. Uh, first of all, we want to thank Dr. Arudo for uh, making time out of his busy schedule to, to talk on personal branding with us. Indeed, he has 
uh, one of the best personal brands I've ever come across. Ever since I met him, I've admired him from afar. He's like a brother to me, and I, I wish to be like him. I wish to have a solid brand like he has. Uh, to also the attendees or the participants, we are very much grateful you made time out of your busy schedule to join us. Uh, we do hope that you've learned a lot and you're not only learning us as such, but you go out there and build on your personal brand. Like Dr. Rudolph said, if you don't build on your brand, that is going to be your brand. The, the fact that you're not building on your brand, it's a brand for you. So make sure you build on your brand and have a solid brand. Uh, I don't know if Mariam has any other thing to say. No, I don't. I think you've pretty much said everything. So once again, we would like to thank um, Dr. Rodolph for um, creating that time to deliver this wonderful presentation to us. I, I learned a lot and I presume that other students learned a lot as well. So thank you very much. Absolutely. So thank you very much uh, once again, Dr. Rudolph. Yeah, very much appreciative of your time, of your lecture. Uh, like he said, the slides will be made available to all of us on the various pages. So uh, let's all be in anticipation. We are going to get a slide, read over the slides, make sure that you practicalize the slide. Uh, even as you plans today, go out there and be ambassadors of today's presentation. So in conclusion, we are very much grateful for your participation. Before we conclude, Isaac, um, just sure. one thing that I would like um, all of us to go back and think of. So um, just a recap in summary, go and think, what do you want to be known for? So maybe just like um, Dr. Rudolph mentioned earlier, if you are someone who is passionate about gender equality, then start um, building the flag in order to be known for that line of um, work. If you are someone that is passionate about promoting education, then start thinking of how you can build your brand right now. So, yeah, thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a wonderful summary and a conclusion. So, yes, uh, we are going to have another webinar series next month, and that is a culture emission series. Uh, we do hope that you join us, even as you join us today. So, on that note, uh, have a wonderful weekend. Have a good afternoon, have a good morning, and have a good night. So thank you very much once again for participating. Thank you very much, Dr. Rudolph and everyone who joined us in today's webinar series. All right, bye.